Hello, thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today I'm going to answer the question that I'm getting most frequently right now. Can streaming Atmos replace Blu-ray audio? So Atmos for Music very recently was rolled out on Tidal and it also exists on other apps like Apple TV has Pearl Jam's album Gigaton. I've spent quite a bit of time going through the songs and albums that are available on Tidal. And as with any other format, the mixes vary in their approach, in their style. All the way from almost nothing but reverb in the surrounds and atmos to some fairly aggressive, important, unique information pushed out there. I've had quite a bit of an enjoyable time listening to Atmos on Tidal and on Apple TV. So to start things off, I'll just say that in my opinion, streaming Atmos is very cool and I'm glad that it's here. But can it replace Blu-ray audio? I'm going to approach this discussion from several different standpoints and hopefully by the end of that I'll have covered just about everything that's on people's minds right now. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of streaming versus physical formats, the difference in quality, the difference in selection, and just whether streaming Atmos is really going to appeal to people and you know whether it's here to stay and whether it's part of the future. All right, so the pros and cons of physical versus digital. For one thing, digital is touchless in this day and age where people are rightly concerned about spreading viruses, which I suppose can happen through the mail. A digital file features no human contact, and so it's lowering that risk. It's also fairly instant Streaming, you just click on a song and it starts up. And even digital downloads are available for you pretty quickly. One of the downsides of digital is the volatility of it, especially streaming. You're at the mercy of the service to keep songs and albums up and available for you that you like. And I haven't really seen any rundown from Tidal, like a bill of rights, like whether we can expect music that we like to remain in perpetuity, or if it's liable to disappear. That sort of thing has happened on other platforms like Netflix. An advantage of physical is the tangible quality of it. You get to hold the album, you get to touch the artwork, you get to thumb through it whenever you want, and it has a way of perhaps drawing you deeper into the art that you're dealing with. That you're trying to experience. I'm not sure that kind of thing could ever be replicated on electronic screens. I do like my shiny discs and um, being able to have photographs and essays and credits and stuff like that immediately at my disposal that I can touch and feel. And then again I also talked about the volatile or ephemeral nature of digital. These albums are here in my possession I know they're not going to disappear. Now, Blu-ray can rot and have other manufacturing complications, so it's not a 100% guarantee that it's going to last forever, but it is a step in that direction. There is some security in having the discs in your possession available whenever you want. All right, so let's talk about quality. Point blank, there is a difference in the bandwidth between Blu-ray and the streaming services, at least, that are on offer right now. Tidal and Apple TV have been offering up Atmos Music over Dolby Digital Plus. And I know for Tidal, the bandwidth is 768 kilobits per second, and I'm not sure about Apple TV. But the available bandwidth for Blu-ray is 54 megabits per second. And that's a difference of about 70 times. So you simply have a greater capability for presenting lossless multi-channel music with Blu-ray than you do streaming. Now the streaming technology may improve someday so that they can vastly increase their bandwidth. But for right now it's sort of like the difference between listening to a high-res audio file compared to like an mp3. There is a lot of compression that has to be put on Dolby Digital Plus to ensure that it can be used 
over the average internet connection these days. Now, I went and compared the title version of Automatic for the People with the Blu-ray version. And people who have watched this channel a fair amount know that I'm not the strictest audiophile ever. I can tell you that the Automatic for the People mixes between the two formats are the same mix and listening to each one I had to adjust the volume of my title up 20 dB which is a known problem right now that title is looking into but having done so my listening experience was roughly equivalent obviously the same mix and I was hearing the same parts now the blu-ray to me sounded better defined particularly in the bottom end so there was a difference in the sound. But was the title streaming version enjoyable to me? Yes, it definitely was. So I think that brings me to the next section of this topic. Is like, are people going to be able to accept streaming Atmos? I think that has to do with a variety of factors. For one thing, people's preferences. For another, their possible biases or assumptions or presumptions. Maybe somebody's going into the whole thing assuming that streaming just can't sound as good as physical and so they're going to hear things maybe <laughs> with a bit of bias. You know, and even for me, like my comparison was far from scientific. And there may have been some biases there. I'm not trying to call anyone out. I'm in the same boat. There's also a difference in our hearing. Some of us have experienced hearing loss, some of us haven't. There's a difference in our systems, like the quality, the ability to reproduce sounds exactly. Differences in our room setups, in our calibration, and just our overall setup. Some systems are gonna be more revealing and less forgiving of certain kinds of audible artifacts. And others may, you know, mask some of that or just complement it better. I myself am running Atmos through a probably a fairly typical system. Didn't spend crazy amounts of money on it. I think it sounds really nice. I love it for music and movies. Would it impress someone else? It's hard to say. I'm not an audiophile. I'm a surround junkie. And I like what I like. I definitely call stuff out if I think it doesn't sound good. And so far, my experience listening to Streaming Atmos over Tidal and Apple TV has been that I like it, it is enjoyable. So there's been a relative paucity of Atmos albums released in Blu-ray over the last several years. As I've shown here, uh, you know, there's Kick by NXS, there's Abbey Road by The Beatles, there's Automatic for the People by R.E.M. And uh, Kenny Wayne Shepherd album last year. Stephen Wilson's putting out an Atmos album maybe later this year or sometime next year, delayed because of the virus. But we're not talking about a great deal of albums. Maybe several dozen if you include some popular stuff and other things that are further off the beaten path. There's also RO3D, so there is some immersive music out there available on Blu-ray, but not a great deal. So now we've experienced an increase in selection. Dolby claims that there will be tens of thousands of Atmos songs available eventually, and Tidal says thousands by the end of this year. And also a handful of albums. You've got Coldplay, Nora Jones, Pearl Jam available right now. A few other popular titles and some blues and jazz stuff, some classical, and hopefully that selection will continue to grow. There are people out there, such as myself, that put it on and it's an enjoyable musical experience. But can streaming Atmos replace Blu-ray audio? In my opinion, no, it cannot. I think it is a worthy addition, an increase in selection and the convenience and the uh, relative low cost. I'm on the military discount with Tidal, so it's about the cost of an album per month. 
it's instant and kind of sifting through playlists is a different experience for me so rather than putting on a whole disc and committing an hour or so I can consume a variety of different things in a relatively short period of time and I'm just enjoying the overall streaming application experience right now. But right now, streaming Atmos cannot replace Blu-ray audio. The massive difference in capability and the at least perceived difference in quality that listeners are experiencing right now. For me, there's a bit of an indistinct low end to streaming Atmos. Other listeners are hearing kind of a mid-rangey experience. You just can't get the kind of definition that Blu-ray offers when you have to heavily compress the Atmos mix. So I'm glad that Streaming Atmos is here. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to keep enjoying it. But I hope, at least for the more popular titles that have a chance of selling well, that we'll continue to get Blu-ray releases so that we can have that maximum quality we can have that security of having that physical copy in our possession. And even just to further support the artists. I've already bought Gigaton by Pearl Jam from Apple TV, but I would gladly also go in for a reasonably priced Blu-ray as well. And Coldplay, Everyday Life, Blu-ray please, bring it on. Nora Jones, come away with me, Blu-ray please. I'm looking forward to seeing what more is coming from Tidal. Hopefully we get a bunch of Elton John that I've heard that Greg Penny has mixed and uh, along with many, many, many other exciting possibilities. Some music that I never expected to hear in Surround is here. And I'm digging it. I know that a lot of you are as well. And it's so great that we have this to enjoy and experience, especially in this time when many of us are still sheltering in place and spending a lot of time at home. It's a very welcome thing indeed. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. Uh, don't forget, if you're new to the channel and like what I do, to subscribe, ring the notification bell, uh, like this video, uh, leave your comments, share the video. It all helps the health of this channel. I appreciate it very much. And until next time, live life in surround.